This is Black Views, bringing you the Black News. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Well, well, well. We have a lot, pretty much, to talk about today. And um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for coming to my channel and listening to my video essay. So we're going to start out with... Uh, uh, Colorado and what seems to have been going on there in Colorado and how to translate to black people in America. So to me, Colorado is unique because you have a situation going here where it appears there are foreign nationals who have taken over uh, two apartment complexes. And basically, in these apartment complexes, you have other Venezuelan nationalists as well. well Unanswered. Of Aurora, Colorado. Mayor, thank you very much for, for coming on with us. Um, it seems it's tough Appreciate to even you. get some confirmation of the details of what is going on there. First off, um, can you confirm whether or not this gang has taken over these buildings there in Aurora? So there are several buildings uh, actually under the same ownership, out-of-state ownership, uh, that have uh, fallen to uh, these Venezuelan gangs. Uh, where I'm trying to walk it back and do the and do the, the investigation as to how the there's a concentration of Venezuelans uh, uh, in these these three buildings. Uh, um, somebody put them there and somebody funded it. Uh, whether it's federal government or not, we're trying to find out who uh, these oh, gangs hilarious. apparently are, are attracted to. Where there's a concentration of of uh, Venezuelan migrants. And so uh, they've in fact have kind of pushed out the property management through intimidation and then uh, collected the rents. Uh, Clear building we now. have now, um, or have had, management. Uh, it is ongoing uh, uh, operations uh, with uh, a, a task force of local law enforcement, state uh, uh, law enforcement partners and, and federal law enforcement partners uh, to root them out and, and arrests have been made, but these operations are now are still ongoing. With the arrests that have been made, are these confirmed gang affiliated members? You know, they, um, yeah, they yeah, this is an organized criminal effort. Uh, whether it's Trende Aragua, uh, that remains to be to be seen. But it don't, really doesn't matter. I mean, if they're if they're you know Venezuelan yeah. migrants and they're and they're uh, conducting crime in an organized manner, uh, they're a problem. So, okay, so Crazy. you're able to confirm that they, this, this Venezuelan, Venezuelan gang has indeed taken over at least some of the buildings. You're saying at least two of the three. And what I just heard from you is you don't know how they ended up there. And you even made a suggestion that they could have been sent there by, by, like, by federal officials, Colorado. I heard you suggest. Yeah, I mean, do you have any reason to believe that to be the case? So here's a, here's the problem. I, I think we're a victim of, of a failed policy at this southern border, border because yeah. uh, what you have, I, Venezuela does not cooperate. According to, to my law enforcement, Venezuela does not cooperate with the United States in sharing criminal histories. Um, you had a third of the country leave. Yeah, you, why would they? They are just deporting their criminals here, and if they shared their maybe I shouldn't say now, Shinesis. We'll just say they're illegal aliens who happen to be there as well. These aliens have found a way to uh, not only take over the apartment complex, but then also charge the residents their uh, money for rent. Now, I don't know how that works as far as utilities, electricity or whatever, but I can imagine that they have an account with the local utility company. And so they're able to pay the utilities through that particular situation but well, anyway so moving forward with that i'm saying i know how america works when i say i know how american works i'm saying that because of my age and where i'm from washington dc and how i know how they move never in my lifetime have i've seen have i have seen where there's just literally literally uh a group from another country somewhere that come here that doesn't speak the language and then takes over, supposedly, this is what we're looking at. They're taking over apartment buildings and 
strong arming residences and telling some residences to leave. It looks like they're telling the white people to leave and they were like, they're just like, you know, they know that the other illegals that are there have nowhere else to go, so they're gonna stay there. They don't have to fill out an application for apartment complex. They can stay there and they'll have these warlords that just watch over them <laughs> because that's what they're used to back in their country. So now this is being brought here to United States <clears throat> and what, what I find real odd about it is there's it just doesn't seem to be any conver any real conversation about it. Um, you hear Trump, he's talking about it. He speaks about it. But from, from my time, this would have been a real major issue. Like this, th this would have been like breaking news. Like the world would have stopped for this and focused on what was going on there. And it just appears today, I haven't heard, I haven't heard Kamala speak on it. I haven't heard, in fact, I haven't heard like any other Democratic um, candidate or shield speak on this. Like, and this is what I find to be quite alarming. Because to tell you the truth, like this type of thing should go against the Democratic, the Democratic Party. You, you you left the gate open. You allowed these people to come into our country, and now they're 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 literally allowed to break the law to survive in a humane way. What is this? I don't know, but I do know that I would not be voting for the Democrats in November. I think that it's a shame and then and then to shame people, black people in particular, black men in particular, to think that like any logical man would look at this and think this is normal. I just I just think it's ridiculous. So go, going back to Colorado, um, growing up, I mean, you can't even have uh, four men standing next to each other, you, four black men standing next to each other. You couldn't have any large size group of black men just out and around. And and now we're we're taking over. We're known to take over the building now. I'm not saying in some areas where course that that you know less fortunate areas that that get less attention to as far as you know, monies and things like that they're doing for the illegals, that there isn't some crime element that that works in those particular areas. But no, these guys are flying buoyantly uh, taking over apartment complex with news media. And it, and no one is really talking about it. It's like, it's almost as if like, no, nah, this ain't really happening. But it's happening. There's no one to say that this is fake. Although there there was, I believe, the Colorado governor that was saying it was fake, but it's like something is not right. And then, then the mayor of Aurora, Colorado, goes on record as to saying that this is something the federal government is doing. Like I, I, I just it's just very unclear and vague what's going on out there, and it really just doesn't make any sense. Like there's nobody to go out there to talk about it. Where are the news? Where is CNN? Where are these big time media uh, groups um, that that love to be around when black people are in misery or when black people are killed? Where, where are these people when it comes to this? Like this doesn't. I'm just I'm speaking also as a prior military person, in my thought process, like that's we're not forgetting about that. In fact, in fact, if, if you're just an average military person. You're sitting, you're sitting in the barracks, like, like, trying to understand this. Like, why haven't we been called up? We're not even to that level because you have state police. Then after state police, you have the national state guard, like the national guard. So you have, think about it. You got uh, Colorado state police. You got uh, um, Colorado national guard, and then you have the army. So, so I'm trying to understand. In what situation would you not call them up into this? Then there were speculations of uh, Hell's Angels getting involved. 
now, now all, all all this could be rumor, you know, all this could be lies, of course, because that's what people do. People just seem to lie, especially for attention and clicks. People will lie. They will literally make shit up. But I mean, I mean, we saw video. I mean, it's. I mean, I don't know. We saw a news broadcast, and I, I, I just can't say if it's real or it's not real. But this, but. I mean, the former President Trump speaks on it. But why hasn't Kamala and Walt come out and say, you know, that's fake. That's that's not real. What's going on in Colorado? That, that, that That's just not real. But we're not getting that. We're forced to come up with this conclusion on our own and try to figure out how to, how that is the way it is. And I just, I just find, I, I find it alarming. Like, like it bothers me because, like I said, you know, black people can't gather up for a goddamn thing. You know, they're they're ready. They they're ready to exterminate black people. Like they 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 beat on their chest when it comes to black people. They would have had every law enforcement group ready to descend upon us. It's just amazing. It would have been on every major news channel. There would have been every every news outlet ready to villainize us and demonize us and make us appear to be uncivilized. And you know, you would have had the per capita that coming out with charts. But where are they on this? Where are these American patriots when it comes to this? But all day they just bang on black people. Black. And that's what leads me to believe many of them are foreigners. Many of them are not actually from America that you see on Twitter spaces that you hear all them just talking about shit they don't know nothing about. They don't even know American history to understand black people. They just they talk like they talk about bleep black people from where they're from. I think many of these people are just like if any be if anybody, they are the bots. You know, the so called uh you know, white supremacists. On Twitter, those are bots. They can't be real people. They have nothing to say about this at all. I don't even understand it. That's not even... Country comes first, right? <laughs> so you think you would talk about, you know, uh, 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 foreign gangs taking over hotels, you know, in a rural Colorado. Colorado. Colorado Springs is there. The Air Force Academies in Colorado. Right? What is it? Uh, cu- color A, A O. Yeah, that's what Colorado means. Color. Help me understand. It's just still. It's it's, it's a mystery. I mean, think about this. You go to work every day. Uh, it, it's, it's like, and, the, and there are, there are uh, people that just pop up somewhere. That's just like some black people just popping up somewhere in the middle of Mexico. Not even on the edges. Just in the middle of Mexico, and we just decide to say, "Hey, we taking over these apartment complexes." What? I know they would treat us as any foreign enemy. They will. They would destroy us even before they called America to say, "Hey, you got these black people over here." They would destroy us, and would take. Well, I mean, and I think would beat on their chest and say how heroic they were to exterminate these Negroes. That came into their country and tried to take over a hotel. I'm sorry, apartment complexes. And they would beat their chest and they would say, we have every right to defend our country. And yet we sit here and we try to figure out what's going on. Something is, there's a dynamic shift that's going on in politics. In politics in America. There's something that's embedded deep. That is changing the way that we will we will vote going forward, and this ain't got to do with no Project Twenty Twenty Nine or Twenty Five or whatever the hell they want to talk. And this this some shit that I've, I begin to notice about the Democratic Party. In this last month, they have showed us a lot. Kamala has showed us that they're na- they have now come out of the closet, the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party has come out of the closet. You know, it used to be a thing where they were catering to black people and the needs of black people. They've gone to that 
to elevating black women, especially in the last 10 years, they have elevated black women over top of us to the point where, where uh, to the point that uh, Obama just says, you know, to black men to pull your pants up. Like, that's, you know, there are working black men out here, respectable black men, okay, that, that are not in a sorority or fraternity. They're respectable black men that did not go to college. They seem to have found other ways to maneuver. And I think right in the Democratic Party mind is that if if you're if you are a black man that is not uh LGBTQ or a black man that is not a rapper or an athlete or just a rich black man, like you you somehow don't matter. You don't matter because the policies do not sway to you as black people. They only go to immigrants and the establishment. And it's, there's just nothing for you. So every immigrant that comes in gets a leg up while you generationally just keep slipping and slipping. And then, and then you have violence. And then you have poor education. And then you have these black shills that are in our communities that win elections and just dis disappear till next next election season. They literally disappear. You don't hear from them all year long. You know, and then what little noise they do make if they have a conversation with some black people, it'll just be among constituents, people that know each other, people that will benefit from whatever decision that he makes. But it will never be the black people at large. The black people dying down the street there. The, the black people over there who are killing each other. But, but, but at the same time, you're uplifting black women, right? Women, the black women are king, queens. You're uplifting them, so why aren't you assisting them with their children? Because you say the black men aren't around, so why aren't you assisting them with their children? Why are black children getting slaughtered in the street? Why are schools for black children the worst? So, so you're just going to blame all that on father, right? She, I guess the, the black man that's being raised by the black women that somehow aren't getting any kind of leg up, but illegals can come over and if you look around these are military age men it's not they, they, we, they're not just fucking you know some people some some women and children young children and women that show up here no 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 you have full full families that have shown up to receive value in america to receive value in being here in america because where they come from, there's nothing. There's nothing. So, so to come here and get a leg up, they are thankful for. And overnight, they have become civilized. But that's not how it works. It doesn't happen over the night to be civilized. And then they put them over top of you. They come and get the programs to have businesses. Because the people that still own these buildings are white people. But they allow the foreigner to come in because they're getting they're getting federal money. That's the guaranteed money. They're getting federal money. And even if they screw up a loan or screw up the business, it's insured by the federal, the same federal government that's giving the black people nothing. And taking and collecting our taxes. And when we don't pay taxes, they will come for you. Especially if you're black. They will come for you to get your little thousand dollars. To get their little three thousand or four thousand, whatever. They're coming to get it. And give it to these people right here. Yeah. They have, they have a direct line to being immigrants. They, they want to remove illegal immigrants. That's why, they don't want, that's why they don't want to say illegal immigrants. Because that affects the ability to be able to receive value and loans and benefits. So you can't say illegal. That, that, that's why they're trying to drop that term. And they're making that term appear to sound as if it's derogatory. 
the, were, were these the facts because they applied they applied to, to black people when black people were on the bottom and still are on the bottom of the totem pole every slang every slur every derogatory term was available for us and nobody policed it get on national television and policed how they were going to talk about those those uh those uh, foundational black Americans. So the Democratic Party has taken a turn for LGBTQ. You, you really got to pay attention. I mean, these people are, are out here now. They're out here, you know, excuse me, man. It wouldn't be no other time where the fire truck is going to come down this street except for when I'm doing this video. So excuse me. You know, these, these, uh, the Democratic Party has really played a role on us. And if you have been paying attention in the last weeks, and if you look at the, op the optics, the optics being, look at the visuals that you see at, these, at the DNC, it's nothing but LGBTQ. Ain't no black man. Ain't, there's no uh, forward-thinking black man in these crowds. Because there's nothing for him. There's nothing for him to benefit from in these crowds. Nothing. At any of these conventions, there's, there's, not, there's no rhetoric towards him. We love our fathers. We love daddy. Look, the, the dude, the, the chairman comes out from the DNC. Look at him. LGBTQ, bro. I, I told you. Look at my videos. Look at my past videos. I'm showing you the optics. That's all. They're, they're LGBTQ friendly. That is it. That's all. It's it. And they down talk us. And they talk sassy to us. Look, look. And, and and then you know those Democrats that you see in Congress, those black those black guys, where are they? Where where are they? You have the grassroots. That's all you have. The only voices that you can really depend on are the grassroots. The people like Tariq Nasheed, Professor Black. And Jason Black, and there are, there are a crew of other people that are out here banging those drums every day to let it be heard and to tell our people about what is going on on a day-to-day -day basis. You can't trust nothing that the Democrats put out. You know, we grew up on Democrats being, you know, how, how we voted politically. You know, our parents and our families pretty much pushed us, in that, pushed us in that direction. We never really paid attention to the details, the policies. We just knew that that's who we voted for because they meant us well. Until you get to a certain age and you start to realize, wait a minute. We, we're not getting absolutely anything from this party. And haven't received anything. And if you really pay attention, what we have received have been co-opted by foreigners and illegal aliens. We have been co-opted from the beginning. Thus produces shields like Roland Martin. You know, Roland Martin the other day, uh, I guess he, you know, he, he was doing or redoing a reaction to an interview that Kamala had with CNN. And as he was doing the interview, a video of a man's behind popped out of nowhere. Oh yes, right while he was live. Booty, a man's booty went across the screen. And this is, and, and this is who we're putting our trust in. These are people that are going out and speaking for us. They're saying that they're foundational black Americans, when well, he is a tether, he's a tether just like Kamala. They're all intertwined. Shields, tethers, I mean tethers, that's a good one. Shields and tethers. Because they're receiving the benefits from the Democratic Party. And they found ways to climb over top of us and discard us. They're not concerned about the killings in the streets because because most people are saying that's not their family. These this is how Shields think. That's not my family. I mean, that's not that's not how I'm raising my son to be in the street. 
They don't care about the black people at large. Just like they were on the, on the plantation. You know, you, you, you had those, those slaves that were, you know, basically saying, you better not go nowhere. You better not. I'm going to have to tell master. You see, you had those kind of slaves. Then you had those kind of slaves that were saying, well, we got to get the hell out of here. Because if we want freedom, we're going to have to make it freedom. And this is what we deal with today. We have people that are on the plantation that are paid to say things that are just, it, it, it could, it, just to put black people in a negative, demonized light. And what hurts the most is because it's hard for us to understand, especially when it had tethers, because we, you know, you know, my generation in particular, we, we at first, and at first we saw the, we saw them as uh, some kind of ally, you know, because you know there, there were more people that began to look like us, had little co had color to them, and you know, uh, we looked at that as like, yeah, that's you know, we we had more voting. Um, power because there are other people you know of color and yeah they're going to be friendly with us and this and that and we start to see you know in particularly as I start to grow I start to see how I work in the workspaces with them and we start to see the things that were going on nationally you know as far as in the trenches like when, when you looked at the riots that were going on in the 90s from Rodney King and things like that you know that's when we were starting to see and starting to notice like nah these people not with us you know, and now we're full out. We we understand we are delineating. We understand who the tethers are. We understand who we don't want to be around. You know, it just makes you wonder, man. You know, I truly believe we are in re in revelations, and this this is this is why things are coming and being revealed to us. While we're starting to see things in plain sight, especially for those of us that are watching and those that are looking. We're starting to see the moves before they get to us. We're starting to call them out. I've been calling it out with Democratic Party being LGBTQ. You know, just just think about it for a second. Like, like, like if you were a straight, straight black male, you know, you could look at Republicans and you could say, you know, I don't, you know, because they, they say shit, they say stupid shit, you know. But but you could look at some things and you can say. But they ain't down for this damn immigration, illegal immigration. Whew, boom, get them up out of here. And secondly, they're not catering to LGBTQ. We're not, they're not going down this road talking about pronouns and talking about... The, so just those two things alone, it's, it's like almost I can deal with everything else. Those two things alone being taken up out of here are going to help black families, nuclear families. You know, there's a lot of things that they promise, but, you know, hey, like I said... Seeing is believing. What have they done for us lately? Same thing with Democrats. The only thing they talk about is what? How to kill a fetus. That's it. The, the right to kill the fetus. You should have a right to have sex with as many men as you want and to have as many abortions as you want. And so you're promoting a degenerate class. And then to sit here and have the Democratic Party, you have Kamala Harris, who won't do a real interview. Her interviews are taped. And then, and, and then to have these things that are going on nationally, they don't speak on it at all. Then she wants to take away, uh, uh, not from, hey, listen, man. If, you, if you still voting for Democrats, if you still looking at them as something of value, I don't know what to say, brothers and sisters. Like you, you know, I, I do understand you're gonna have your boule, you're gonna have your people that, you know, they think something special about being in a group that does nothing for their people. You know, it's one thing to have brotherhood and sisterhood and to and, and to teach and understand that there's a close knit group that may be closer than others that can work together and make things happen. But nowhere in them bylaws do I see or uh, uh anything, especially about what they're doing now. You know, especially in, in in the beginning, you know, you know, these these parties and so forth, they were a good source. I mean, I'm sorry, 
parties or these sororities and fraternities that you know in the beginning they were a good source of, of pride and 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 I guess and trying to teach young men and women uh you know just trying to teach them things you know what I'm saying I, you know uh give them a backbone and things like that I, I get all that but but we've turned into something else man it's it's turned into de- degeneracy parties it's all about pop booty popping ass popping you understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, they have taken the power of man out of the whole scenario. You know, we're just gonna raise the the, the black woman and the, and the child. What child? The the black male child? Because he's going to jail is alarming rate. Like he's not even being policed or watched. He's not being kept at all. And then and then I mean, like I said, the party of LGBTQ, and I believe that the Democratic Party. Wants to neutralize black men, period. Any kind of black masculinity, uh, they want to take that out the game. They want to start with that first. If they know, if they know they can take black masculinity out, then white masculinity, you, psh, you done. You're done because you almost there anyway. And so they know if they can take that out, then I mean, I guess you can control the population because. Then, like, you know, maybe, I don't know, they'll be harvesting nut and shit, artificial nut and shit, you know what I'm saying, to make artificial, God, God damn, this shit's crazy. But, um, I mean, look at it for what it is, man. You got Colorado, you got LGBTQ party, DNC, and you got Roland Martin, that's pretty much what we talked about today. Um, because that's what the Democratic Party is trash, trash. I don't care if you vote for for uh, Trump or not. I know the Democratic Party is trash. And if you sitting up here trying to make somebody believe somehow, some way, they no, it only benefits foreigners, tethers, foreigners and tethers. It does not benefit the black man, a foundational black America. Right. So I'm going to leave it at that. This is Black Views. Bring you the Black News. Please like, also subscribe.